So continuing this conversation about the pineal and the supra intuition that it brings you into, that supra intuition where you're able to know without being taught, that's what we're calling supra intuition. It's not regular intuition where you're guessing, hitting and missing. It's supra. It's tapped directly into cosmic intelligence. And the cosmos is then feeding you your answers. That's how prophets get revelation. That's what wahi is. It's the connection of the intellect with a supra-intuitive energy that feeds it directly from what Allah has established as awareness in the cosmos. And it is not to be questioned. It is supra-intuition. All right, let's continue. So the friction, I repeat, is being caused due to the intellect's nature and ability to separate things, to keep things in check by categorizing things. When that nature in your intellect comes in contact with a supra-intuitive energy that, has been, uh, that is being released based on the activation of the pineal, which is bringing you into a oneness, a semblance, then it causes friction for the intellect. So the intellect has to then rest so that the pineal evolutionary energies can take the throne. You want to know where that is in the Quran? Read about the three levels of the nafs. Nafsin la amara, the desirous soul. Nafsin la wana, the discriminating, see, the discriminating soul. That's your intellect. And then there's nafsin mutma'inna. They call it the soul that rests. And it is from that point that Allah invites you into his Jannah. <laughs> what is Jannah? It is the activation of those pineal energies. You think it's after you die and all of that. That's the next level of your development. We're talking about a book of guidance that is designed for your earthly life. So whatever is in there is speaking about your earthly concerns, including Jannah. It's not talking about your afterlife when you die and go to wherever you think you're going. It's talking about when you die to your own potential and how you can lead yourself out of that death, out of that dormancy into brand new levels of life existence. Call the Jannah. Where Allah is pleased with your performance. So you activate that pineal by learning the proper meditation that's in the Quran. It's called a dhikr. A dhikr. Contemplation. That's called yetadabaru. Allah says, do they not yetadabaru the Quran? Meaning, do they not deeply ponder and consider the Quran? Had it been from other than Allah, there would have been multiple discrepancies, so says Allah. So everything in the Quran is united. There are no discrepancies because there are no differentiations in the Quran. All things are actually one thing, but if you don't come into your super intuitive ability to separate out the distinguished parts of the Quran and thinking that the Mutas Shabiha is not the Muhkamat and the Muhkamat is different than the Mutas Shabiha and the, the Muhkamat is just the fundamental verses and the laws and the, the, the Sirah and the Surah and the Sirah and the Sarah. And you, you believe in all of these things are not related to the next thing. I'm telling you that the Quran is telling you very bluntly, very succinctly and very carefully that the Muhkamat is also the Mutashabihat. Two sides of one coin. In other places in the Quran, it tells you very clearly that the Mutashabiha, the Quran, the entire Quran, is Shubaha or Mutashabiha. And then in another place, Allah calls 
the Mohammad, the mother of the book, meaning it gave birth to everything else. But just like you give birth to your child and you say, that's me, fathers especially, they look at their sons or they say, yeah, that's they Somebody asks, is that you, that, that you, man? Yeah, that's me, that's me. Yeah, you look like it, yeah, that's me. Right? Well, the Muhammad is the mother of the book. So the Mutashabiha, even if it were produced out of the Muhammad, it's still me. <laughs> So says the Quran, that's still me. No difference. So the pineal supra-intuitive nature is what brings the soul, the nafs, into an understanding of all things as being one thing. So that's what Imam Muhammad was referring to as cosmic man. We're not even earth will be an excuse for you differentiating and distinguishing and separating so-called races from each other. There'll be no black matters, no black lives matter movement when you come into your supra-intuitive cognition because there won't be any real thing as black people and white people and red people and yellow people and brown people and white people. There won't be any such thing as all of these different artificial and artificially concocted ideas related to the differences of people based on something as superficial as skin color. Are you kidding? If you're not above that yet and you've been under Imam Muhammad for 10 years, 20 years, 33 years, and you're still talking Black Lives Matter and you know, uh, different kinds of Muslims and you see Muslims as being different than Christians and Jews, you're not reading the Quran correctly. You think a Muslim is one who wears a kufi and a khimar and a long dress and some baggy pants and came out of the deserts of somewhere? You think that's what Allah means by Muslim? You're not listening to Imam Muhammad. He gave us the definitive meaning for Muslim. He said, everywhere you see the word Muslim in the Quran, he said, just translate it as human. Then he came behind it to say, true human. And it is reported that Muhammad the Prophet said that every child is born upon the fitrah. So where's the Pakistani in that? Where's the Misra'een in that? Where's the African in that concept of every child being born upon Allah's pattern recognition creation? You had better learn to read what that pattern is suggesting as a signature instead of taking up the time to introduce your culture as the superior culture in the world. And I'm speaking to the Arabs particularly. And as an offshoot of that mentality, I'm speaking to the so-called black people of America who still are suffering an identity crisis. But as Imam Muhammad said, before you even struggle in your intellect to determine what black is as a designation in your mind or what African American is, he said, before you do that and establish yourself upon that pedestal, he said, first, intelligence dictates that you want to know what a human is before you want to know what a black man is or a white man or a Pakistani, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why do you want to know those superficial things when the most important detail of your development is clocked into what you are and what you do as a human? And you can't even tell me what the English word human means. Imam Muhammad said, Muslim means human. But if we don't know what human means, we're stuck again. Please, people, take Nunetics seriously. It's unlocking the rusty locks. And this method is what's going to introduce you to the true and real meaning of the word Tawheed. Now, in order for the pineal to become activated, the intellect must silence or make it dormant all of its unnecessary chatter 
all of what the intellect thinks it knows. The brainiac stuff. I know better than you. I know more than you. I can pronounce Arabic better than him. I teach better than he does. My daddy was a grand ulema scholar, and therefore that makes me better than you, you Harlem Muslim resident, you. That's all artificial stuff going on as chatter in the brain, in the intellect. Because the intellect is supposed to use its differentiating abilities in the same way as I mentioned that a professional wielder of knives uses it as a butcher in the operating room and etc. But as soon as you leave the operating room and the butcher's store to go out with that cleaver or that hatchet and start hacking away at innocent people then your knife becomes an illegal weapon. And it's the same thing with your nefs. See, knives, nefs. Same thing with your nefs. When you begin to use it to chop away at humans, at people, then you're doing the exact wrong thing in terms of what Allah created your intellect to do. It's not supposed to, it's supposed to chop away at the world and divide the world up into sciences and manageable uh, portions of information but it's not supposed to begin doing that with humans is the point when they started chopping up the world and calling people races you know what a race is somebody's going to be in front somebody's going to be in the middle somebody's going to end up at the back some people are going to drop out so that's a satanic application for the word race there's no such thing as race in the Quran. Tell those scholars to show it to you, the ones who keep using that word. You say, well, Sodom and Gomorrah, weren't they racism? No. You say, well, what about the Ad and the Thamud? In the, nope, they're not racist. And you're not knowing that because you're not understanding the very important connections in those words and their letters and even in their sounds with what Allah is attempting to teach you. So you have to silence that chatter, that know-it-all proclivity in the brain, in the intellect, that ego assuaging, that insecure people express all of the time. When you silence that chatter, now I'm about to go into what is the most important part or point in tonight's discourse. When you learn to silence the chatter, which this world's manipulators do not want you to learn to do. They want noise in your environment even as you sleep. People sleeping with the television on with the radio playing all kinds of blasted music and lyrics that are going into your subconscious mind and conditioning you on the frequency level so that the higher life of higher frequencies never reach your door. You don't understand the scheme. Words make people. So when you learn to silence that chatter through, as I said, the practice of dhikr, because the dhikr hmm, is the greater force. You understand that now. The dhikr, which is owned by our source creator, when you tap into that source, that becomes magnified and repeated over and over again for you in your life concerns. So when you do that, there is a secretion that is produced by the part of the brain called the claustrum. And the claustrum is part and parcel of the cerebrum that is the top portion of your human brain that does the thinking. It does the moral determining. It does the rational application of decisions that are made that's taking place in what is called the cerebrum, C-E-R-E-B-R-U-M. And it's related to the RAM, R-A-M, that animal 
because the ram likes to declare itself the leader of the pack. No two rams can lead the herd of sheep simultaneously. They have to fight each other. They will butt horns against each other until one gives in and there can only be one ram, that's the male sheep, one ram, not two, one ram on top, like the ram stands on top of the hill. There's a ram in your cerebrum, your cerebrum that likes to stand on top of the hill in terms of what your intellect is able to determine and manifest. My goodness. So this claustrum that is part and parcel of the cerebrum, the cerebrum, in ancient times, the claustrum portion of your brain and the secretion that is poured out from the claustrum section of your brain, the ancient Greeks called it Christos. We mentioned that word in the beginning of this discourse. That's why they have something now called Crisco oil. That's where they get it from the Greek word Christos. Christos refers to a crystallizing and a christening of oils that are being secreted from the claustrum portion of your brain. And Christos means oil. Now this secretion pours down the spinal cord. This is happening in your body, my body, our bodies on a monthly basis. At least once a month, every single human being has this secretion happen within the claustrum. And that oil pours down the spinal cord that's connected to your spine until that oil arrives at what is called the sacral plexus portion of the bottom part of the spine. You'll get this recording and you'll, you'll investigate this language. That oil, I repeat, it is secreted and it is poured down the spinal cord until it arrives at the sacral plexus portion of the bottom part of the spine that's almost near the tip of the spine called the coccyx. It's called the sacral bone. It's a combination of five fused bones. The sacral bone towards the bottom of the spine. That's where the oil that is pouring down the spinal column becomes situated. The claustrum became known as the holy claustrum because of the purity of these oils or of this oil being secreted. It was called the holy claustrum and it later came to be known as the sacred claustrum. They interchanged the words holy with sacred. So it became known as the sacred claustrum, referring to this oil secretion. Later, it became mythologized as saintly claustrum. So it went from being called a holy claustrum to being called a sacred claustrum. And you know it's the same thing. We have the phrase holy cow. But we also talk about the sacred cow, right? They interchange those words. But later after they began to develop mythologies related to this oil, it then became known as the saintly you know how the saints have the halo over the heads? The saintly claustrum. The claustrum is at the top of the head. So they called it the saintly claustrum, but they mythologized it. And they took the word saint and it became Santa. And they took the word claustrum and it became, of course, claus. C-L-A-U-S. So saintly claustrum and the oil that is secreted down the spine became Santa Claus who is at the roof of the house meaning what 
the top of the brain, and he then comes down the fireplace to deliver his goods to the family members. Well, that's what the oil is doing. It's delivering its goods to the rest of the body. When it distributes that oil towards the base of the spine, and then Santa goes back up to the roof <laughs> because they understood that the secretion makes a U-turn from the bottom of the spine back up towards the top of the brain, the cerebrum. But in order to make that U-turn, there has to be an effort on the part of the individual to do certain things that will allow for the U-turn to be executed in the body. So normally, a human will experience this secretion, but because most of us are stuck in the lower energy levels of the chakras, that energy that came down the spine as Christos remained saturated in the lower materialistically inclined areas of chakric energies. I'm going slow enough so that when you listen back, listen to it on YouTube, rewind it, you'll get it. Just take notes and ask questions. That emission, that secretion can get stymied at the bottom of the chakric ladder, which is dealing with two major things, materialism and the safety related to having stuff in place like babies want safety and also the pleasure principle. That's what exists as energies around the chakra and the sacred plexus or the sacral plexus bone towards the bottom of your spine. So the chrism or the oil remains stuck there and it atrophies. But if you know what to do in terms of what the Quran calls as salah and as zakah, and you know what to do in terms of what the Quran calls as dhikr, which is medica uh, medication, yeah, it's a medication, all right. But it shouldn't have been called just remembrance because it is actually the ideal form of meditation. You don't have to lose yourself. You don't have to do any otherworldly or out-of-body type of experiences. You don't have to go through all of that. Those are the extremes. What the Quran came to bring us is the balance, the uswa, hmm? the balance. So when you know how to do that, you will become effective at having those energies within that chrism make a U-turn from the bottom of the spine and they will begin rising again like Santa Claus rises back up to the roof to greet his reindeer. You will have an energy in you that will also experience a, an ascension, sound familiar, and a resurrection. Once it gets to the roof, once it gets to the top, once it gets back to the cerebrum, then it returns to its original throne. Now, just keep this in mind as information. Christ being crucified at 33 years old, according to the Bible, is stating that the return of the chrism to the brain happens after the oil rises from the sacral plexus back up to the brain after traversing the 33 vertebrae of the spinal column. So this was an information that was necessary to be detailed by the Quran. The Quran is dealing with a whole nother frequency level when it comes to who Isa is that actually differs from what the Bible says concerning Jesus. What the Bible is saying concerning Jesus has been articulated in much older stories, narratives in history than that Christian New Testament story. Everything just about that's being said about Jesus the Christ in the Bible has been said about multiple characters and personalities. I believe one writer 
came across 127 similarities between Jesus as he's given in the Bible and in Christianity and dozens of other personalities in religion and in myth, including Krishna, born a virgin, born of a virgin, uh, and all of the things it says about Jesus, including the crucifixion. These characters were also crucified by various means and methods. So the Jesus story in the Bible is not new. That's why the Quran doesn't repeat it because it's not talking about Isa per se. We'll get into that at some other time. Don't ask me about that right now. Suffice it to say that the Jesus story of the Bible is simply a retelling of ancient mythologies, ancient applications for human psychology, how to control people, how to manipulate, how to master, and for how to bring your own self into self-mastery. And the one called Master Farad Muhammad was aware of what I'm telling you right now. So the 33 years of Christ's life is speaking to the idea of the chrism having to travel back up the 33 vertebrae of the spinal column. It crosses what is called the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S nerve. It has to cross. You get it? Christ died on the cross so that oil crosses into an area where it becomes dormant. It's called the vagus nerve and it is at the top of the spinal column. And that oil rises up through those seven basic chakric energies that are attached also to the back of the spine. And it reaches what is called the pneumogastric nerve and its optic thalamus. I know I'm giving you science and medical terminology, but you'll look them up or you'll ask questions. It rises up the energy ladders of your chakras or what some scientists might call your endocrine gland energies, of which there are seven basic levels. When it approaches towards the top, after it has traversed all 33 of your spinal column bones, it reaches that pneumogastric nerve and its optic thalamus. You already know optic has to do with the eyes. And the optic thalamus is an egg-shaped organ that sits directly in the middle of your head, and they call it your third eye. You see how your eye is shaped like an egg? Well, this particular product of the body is called the optic nerve. And when that oil returns to this area of the brain, then the optic thalamus's energies are magnified by 1,000%. Once it literally comes into contact with the optic thalamus, the so-called third eye, that is when the magnification of those energies take place. This same idea is treated in the Quran under the term Aynul Yaqeen, the eye of certainty, not the eyes, not Aynain, the singular eye of certainty not of knowledge. There's also ilm in the Quran, the eye of knowledge. But this is speaking about the top level of energies in what is called in science and in other areas, in especially metaphysics, it's called the third eye. And that is where the beginnings of supra-intuition are born. So when the oil reaches the pineal gland from which it originally came and it sparks an energetic resurrection or rejuvenation of millions of dormant brain cells, dead brain cells, if you will, those cells become enlivened 
and it brings one into what is called, as I said earlier, supra-intuition and its possibilities. All of this is as the result of vigorous pondering of the universe, the cosmos, and of ourselves, searching for the ayat in the skies, in the earth, and in ourselves. That search which Allah says most people don't pay any attention to. So this superintuitive awakening is as the result of that yet tadabbaru, that deep-seated pondering of the universe and all that it entails. And then we need to ponder what our connection is, what our relationship is with this wonderful manifestation called the universe and the cosmic powers and energies inherent within it. We have to begin to think about those things. Stop thinking about your relationship with your boss or your, just your husband and your children. You got to think cosmically now. When you couple that type of pondering with meditation, when you learn to be still and you learn how to still your thoughts, your emotions, stop them from quivering as much, stop them from worrying about things and falling under fear and grief and all of these things that the Quran tells you about. You have to learn to silence those things and you have to go back into your resting positioning. I call it the dielectric inertia plane that then gives birth to the sine wave, S-I-N-E. We spoke about that last week. So you have to couple that pondering with meditation and specific exercises. That's what Salah represents also, certain movements that are designed to increase the blood flow to the pineal, such as sajda, it sends the blood down to the middle of the forehead where the pineal is situated. Then you have the rukua, the bending over, that's for a particular purpose in terms of mus muscle relaxation and so forth. Then you have your qiyam, standing position, that's for a particular purpose where you're reciting the words of Al-Quran as frequency modulation within you, massaging the intellect with the words of Allah. See, massaging masia, masaha, messaging, your messaging. When you recite the Quran, you thought you were messaging when you were on Facebook, huh? Can't compare with this messaging, with this messaging from the message called the Al-Quran. And also, once you're finished in your positioning with what is called as salah, you're supposed to follow it up immediately with what is called as zakah. And the majority of the Muslim world misses this point in the Quran. Most of the time, Allah mentions as salah, it is immediately followed with as zakah. Wa iqamu salah wa ita'i zakah. That's all throughout the Quran. Those who rise up for as salah and those who give ita'i. The word ita'a means to give, but it doesn't mean that the giving is so much calculated. It's when you give in a way that the person who's receiving the gift didn't know it was coming. There are these two levels of giving in the Quran. There's the giving where it's calculated and it's expected as in your weekly paycheck or your Christmas day gift under the tree. You know, you expect that from family members. And that's not itai, that's not the giving of zakat. That can't be zakat because it was calculated. Zakat under the phrase itai zakat. Ita is to give, like Allah says in the surah called Al-Kawthar, that same word is being used there to represent the, the giving of zakah. It's when it is not calculated and it was not expected. My oh my. And you're supposed to do that as soon as you leave the comforts of the salah. So let's say you 
just got finished. You're supposed to immediately begin thinking about who I can give something to. Who needs something that I have. And you're not just supposed to choose from the things you don't want anymore. Allah says in the Quran, you're supposed to give of those things which you love. And they asked the Prophet, how much of this stuff that I love am I responsible for giving away? Allah says in the Quran, for the Prophet to tell them, whatever is beyond your means. You know what that means? You're supposed to be doing inventory of the things you own. And you're supposed to say, do I really need this? Do I really need all of these clothes in the closet? Kareem and I do it all the time. And we end up going to the thrift store the next day. I haven't worn this since I lived in New York. You know, New York is a fashion town, so you had to look fly in certain places you went to. Down here in the South, man, I don't even iron my clothes. <laughs> and nobody cares. <laughs> in New York, they might point it out. Hey, man, you slept in that? What happened? Were you sleeping in the subway? How did you get so wrinkled? Down here, yeah, man, listen, a couple of minutes of sunshine, those wrinkles are gone. And if I'm not wearing it, I have to say, I don't need this. There's someone out there whom Allah will allow to get hold of this who needs it more than I do. And sometimes it'll be your favorite outfit, but you haven't worn it in three years. Probably doesn't even fit you anymore. Give it away. That's when you're going to come into excessive amounts of super intuitive cognition. So in closing, that word Messiah, as I told you, is consonantally connected to the word message. And in the Quran, Jesus is referred to as a word that's mentioned earlier as Kalima. The Bible calls Jesus the word. The Quran calls Jesus a word, generic, kalimatan, generic. The Bible calls Jesus the word, which existed in the beginning. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the, you know, and all of that, right? So the Bible makes the mistake of not only saying that the word was from God, it says the word was from God, then right behind it, it says, and the word was God, the Logos, because they wanted to neatly fit Jesus into the package that would be accepted by Christians that says that Jesus and God were the same essence and the same substance. So they finagled, they manipulated the language to say that God is the word and Jesus is the word and therefore God and Jesus are the same substance. This is Christian, particularly Catholic dogma and doctrine. Allah says, if all of the trees were pens and all of the oceans were ink and you were to times it by seven, never will you exhaust the word of Allah. He didn't say that he was the word. He uses the word to convey the idea that the word is another part of his creation that serves his interests. So now let us quickly examine the English word word because the English word W-O-R-D is actually an acronym for the four basic elements of water, air, fire, and land. The W in word stands for water. The O in word stands for the circular way in which air distributes its energies. The R in word is for the rapid way that fire has of increasing its presence. It likes to catch on to things. It rips and runs. You see all of these R's? Fire. The D in word represents land, that which is down beneath you. So word, the English word word, is actually a secret language acronym for the four basic elements. So if Jesus is the word, then Jesus is not the source creator. Jesus represents something in creation. And I described that something earlier as 
intelligence. Intelligence is born out of the fitra, and the fitra is representative of these four basic elements that is the fitra. In the Quran, al fitra is describing what science now calls pattern recognition in nature. That's the big talk now in science. Pattern recognition. Even the patterns of your emotionality doesn't have to be physical creation. It can be mental creation. The pattern of your thoughts. Hmm? So we're coming into new levels of cognition when it comes to what the fitra actually is. And we're able to now distinguish the fitra of created things from the source creator of all of those things. We can't even call Allah a supreme being because he's not a being as we know beings. Beings are part and parcel of created things. We can't, uh, we have to in the future find a better term than he if we're understanding he to mean the masculine gender. So we say he. I could show you if I had time. I won't do it tonight, but one night I will. I'm going to show you how probably close to half of the times that the word Allah is mentioned in the Quran that is actually in reference to a feminine energy as opposed to a masculine energy. I can show you right in the Tasmiya. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman is given as a masculine term, but ar-Rahim, that loving nature that loves to excuse people's wrongs and sins and mistakes and infirmities, Ar-Rahim, the merciful redeemer, that's mama. She's the one who, daddy ain't redeeming nothing. You did something bad at school, you talk back to somebody, you hit out at your mother. When daddy gets home, ain't no redemption for you. There is the benefaction. He's, he's going to lay something on you, <laughs> but it might not be what you like. And if you don't understand that, look throughout the Quran where Ar-Rahman is used. It ain't this merciful guy that just excuses everything you do and to give you everything you want. Ar-Rahman is the only attribute that's associated with Allah's judgment day. Allah as Ar-Rahman is going to be doing the judging. Yes, he'll be merciful and sparing and all of that as a part of the Ar-Rahim. But as Ar-Rahman, Allah is Stern. Read it for yourself in the Quran. Stop going with what the scholars told you. Ar-Rahman is the merciful, the one who's, uh, you know, is from Rahman, which means mercy. And also the word for the womb of the woman is uh, Arham, Raham, Arham. Yeah, but if you study the womb and what develops within a womb carefully and unemotionally, you're going to find out that there's so much pressure being put on that newly forming life substance. Bones coming together. You remember Imam Muhammad told us about this in 1975? He said if you could consciously remember the pain that was involved in bones coming together and the blood being squished and splashed throughout the arteries and the, and the heart beating in that small center, you're all cooped up, surrounded by a water sack. Does that sound like mother's mercy <laughs> to you? The womb is merciless if you register what's taking place consciously. But Allah let you either not know about or immediately forget about all of that pain and pressure as soon as you're born out of your mother's insides. That's the merciful benefactor. So the word, word, is representative of the four basic areas of the fitra. Water, air, fire, land. Now, if we're looking at it on the metaphysical level, then these four levels become emotional level, water, spiritual level, air, intellectual area, 
fire, land that represents the material level. So water, air, fire, and land become emotional, spiritual, intellectual, and the material levels of your development on the metaphysical level of development. Part of what you're going to be receiving from your study of pneumatics is actually connected to your ability to give back because the fitra demands give and take. If you try to suck up all of the oxygen and not give it back out to feed the plant life and so forth, you're going to embarrass yourself first of all and you're going to kill yourself if you do it the wrong way. T tape up your nostrils and see what happens. Tape up your mouth so you can't breathe. You'll be breathing through your pores but then wrap your body in tape and see what happens. You don't want to give back. You're going to die. It's the same thing with economics. You take, take, take. But if you don't give back, your own growth is going to be stymied. You remember that little rascal's character? Stymie? One of them had no hair. The other one had so much hair that it had to be wrapped up in ribbons. Buckwheat. You want to be all of those characters all over again? Don't do what they did. Little black Sambo. You know what Sam is? It's the Semitic word Shams that we have in the Quran. It means the sun, S-U-N. Bo means that the sun, which represents your social sensitivities and your social intelligence, has been tied up. You are Sambo. It's a play on Sam's son and the cutting off of his seven locks. So don't let them wrap your knowledge in bows. Yeah, because when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall and down will come baby. Cradle and all, bow and bow are saying the same thing. All right, so with that said, open up your phones one at a time. And let me know who you are and where you're calling from. Thank you for your participation tonight. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. This is Muhammad Yusuf, Muhammad Shaka Yusuf from Sacramento. Yeah. And was, as, as, as always, my brother, is, it was a beautiful lecture. And I will continue to ride with you and support you. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful frequencies in those statements. Alaikum salam. Thank you so much for that. Great. And I'm looking forward to talking to you one on one in the very near future, possibly before the weekend is over. So when you email me, Inshallah. kindly include your phone number if you haven't done so. Okay. All right. And I, want, I want to let you know, too, that I was introduced to you by Brother, um, uh, Brother Zaid Muhammad. All he right. Was for a while, yeah. So I uh, he, I stay in touch with him a lot, and also brother brother um, Kenya, brother Kenya. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Brother, uh, keep, those two brothers keep your arms around me, keep me right. In You're in good company. And, uh, so, good company. Uh, yeah, and in fact, other people who may be new, thank you. Other people who may be new, it would help us to know who invited you and who told you about the call. I like to give them their props also. So let's keep it going, man. That was wonderful. Absolutely, sir. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Anyone else? Name and where you're calling from. Especially if you're new. Regulars can call in also or can chime in also. Not a problem. Let's keep it moving, though. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hold on. One at a time. Assalamu alaikum, twin. Wa alaikum assalam, twin. How you be, man? Yeah, this is twin. <laughs> wonderful. Alhamdulillah. This Glad is, to alhamdulillah. know I'm in Long Island, New York. Yeah, now this man is probably the uh, longest learner that I have on this line. He was with me back in Hollis, Queens, when I used to have weekly classes of two and three people, him and his wife and maybe one other person. <laughs> so that's how we began all of this teaching stuff. 
I um I sent you two uh, kutbas. I don't know if you received both of them. I, I have. I listened to one, and I'm going to listen to the other one in the next day or so. They're absolutely fantastic. And I want to thank you so very much. Well, we're going to get you some YouTube presence also. I'm going to uh, work on putting those lectures up on YouTube so everyone can have access to that wisdom. All right. Let you know, I see. I'm not going to hold you up. I thank you. Thank you so very much, and uh, may Allah continue to bless you and the family. Thank you, sir. And if, in case people are wondering why we addressed each other as twin, it's not because we look alike. It's because we <laughs> were with each other so much that we became like another version of the Bobsy twins. When I turned, he was there looking at me, and when he turned, I was there looking at him. We were studying together visiting places together, going to different cities and towns. He came with me into the South. Uh, instructor Michael Hameen would remember him because he was a part of that experience back then in uh, many parts, actually, of the South. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mississippi, Alabama, all of these places, and all over New York. And he is now the imam in the city of Wyandanche, New York, and we thank him for the great work that he's been doing there these past years. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. Anyone else? Jump in. It's like double Dutch now. Just jump in. Yes, but as alaykum. I'm in Abumaji, Los Angeles, California. Alaykum salam. Okay, tonight. Me and my wife are sitting here listening. We've been listening for the last four hours. My goodness. <laughs> you, know, you remember Muhammad, you remember Muhammad told us goodness was on the rise so I say my goodness when I hear that because I know that's not me I know that's not me I don't have that kind of magnetism to be able to draw people away from their concerns to listen to what I have to say for four and five and sometimes six and seven straight hours as some of you know but it continues to be downloaded and I continue to deliver because it's not to me. It's now a we situation. I also feed from the numbers of very influential learners that I have in the group of Nunetics. These people are developing at a rate of speed that would, you, it, would be, it would be unmerciful if you were able to see their development in one shot. At times when I thought they weren't learning as much, and I would have a conversation with them or they, they would send me some writing and I'd say, where in the world? And I know where it came from. It came from the same place that I'm getting mine, straight from Allah, the source creator. So I say to all of you, do not disparage. If you run into a brick wall and it's something you don't understand, you have to go through all of that first and then Allah is going to open up the portals. Trust me when I tell you that. And you will be surprised at what you know and can teach and tell other people. And when you read the Quran, particularly the understanding that you begin to come out with by the permission of Allah. So stay dedicated. Don't put your attention on any individual, not even me. Put your attention on the message. Put your attention on the knowledge. And you'll find yourself growing exponentially. Yeah, thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank your wife. If she's still listening, thank you. Yeah. All right. We want to we want to hear that feminine energy too now. All right. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam. We learned so much tonight. I'm totally excited because I understood about the cerebrum and the penile gland. I this was excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Imam. It's wonderful to know that. So keep in mind what I said also that for anyone that you know who wants to join the university online learning course that meets on Sundays at 7 p.m., it is absolutely free of charge as long as you join before December 31. If you join before December 31 and you join simply by sending me a request through that email address, CosmicQuran1 at gmail.com. Just say, I'd like to join your course. That means that you have an entirely free semester. That means for the rest of December and then for January, February, and March, 
you have free access to this information on Sundays. The Thursday class is always free for anybody. So you need to call up your imams. You need to call up your family members. Let's switch that around. You need to call up your family members first, even if they're not Muslims, and say, I got a teaching that you're going to be interested in because he's talking our talk. Then when you go to the masjid, you leave a note for your imam if he's not available and say, imam, you need to join this class. You need, don't say you should, say you need to join this class. Instructor Benjamin Bilal, here's his email address, here's his number. All you got to do, you don't even have to tell him you're an imam if you don't want. Just say, hey man, I heard about you, I listened to you on YouTube. And all you got to do is Google Imam Benjamin Bilal on YouTube and you'll hear the latest from last week, as recently as last week. All right? And say, you know, I, I'd like to join your class. You can join, and then two weeks later, you don't like what you're hearing, just don't come back. <laughs> but give yourself the opportunity to at least see what this information is, especially if you say that you are in touch and a supporter of Imam Muhammad's language and logic. This is obviously the next step up. And if Imam Muhammad were here, literally, and physically right now, he'd be jumping for joy. I know that. I'm not guessing. I know that. So don't be those people like the brothers of Yusuf who have to wait until the end of the story to come with hat in hand and be served by Yusuf and his brother. Benjamin, by the way, they call him. Don't wait that long. When you can be right, stop trying to bury this in the well. That's what they did with Yusuf. They threw him. They wanted to kill him. But instead, they opted to just out of sight, out of mind him by throwing him in the well. And some travelers came along. See, I know what all of that is. Already, I got people in Pakistan who want me to teach them exclusively. I have people in Sierra Leone. I have people in some other parts of the world who want me to dialogue with them one-on-one -on -one and teach them and give them most of my time because they think some of you are wasting my time. So those are the travelers, but they come along for economic reasons. Say, so maybe we can use this dude, <laughs> what he's talking about. So you got to go through all of that and be at the home of the Aziz and the wives and the cutting of the wrists and all, all of that is happening as we speak, if you understand the symbolism. They imprison him. It's not talking about me. It's talking about this message. But we can shortcut that entire story and go straight from the beginning of Yusuf's Love for his family members, love for his siblings, love for his father who was so concerned about him. That's Imam Muhammad in my mind. <laughs> and just shoot to the straight, of the, the, the straight to the end of the story where they're all together sharing in the resources. See, you don't have to follow that whole blueprint that's in the Quran. That's for disobedient people. We have been created anew as a people under Imam Muhammad's language and logic. So let's follow the logic. Get with the program. Study this new language called Nunetics. Be in a position to teach any Muslim on this planet from the position of an understanding of the letter system and what each letter means and how it can be identified, not in the four schools of thought, but in al fitra Every single one of those letters can be identified as a part of your human body. They can be identified in the environment and they can be identified as abstract concepts. You should want to know what that is. All you have to do is convince your lower self to stop being so damn lazy. That's all. Say, I'm going to commit myself to learning like I did under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad if I was there. You remember that two in the morning, black coffee, burnt toast. <laughs> you remember those days. If we did half of that in studying nunetics, in six months, you won't be able to recognize your wife or your husband or your child who studies this or yourself. You wonder where in the world, how did I learn all of this in this short period of time? I got people on this line right now. If they want to speak up, they'll tell you that they are witnesses to what I'm saying in themselves and in others around them. So prepare yourself. Thank you. Anyone else? Introduce yourself. Star 6 your phone. Tell us who you are, where you're calling from, male, female, child, 
teenager, doesn't matter. Elder, doesn't matter. Chime in. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. My name is Lisa. Okay, hold on. Let's let's let the uh yeah. the the feminine principles uh Assalamu take the floor. Alaikum salam. Give us your name again. My name is Anissa Abdul Mateen, and I'm calling from yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> By way of my sister, I've known for so many years. Oh, give me a minute here. Take your time. I understand brain freeze. <laughs> Abdul Mateen and we have been Ab Abdul Shaheed. Yeah, you're went, talking about one of my shining yes. stars. Yes, we've been friends and sisters, sisters for so many years. And I love her so much and I thank her for giving me this uh, opportunity because she turned me on to this right here. Okay. Indeed. Well, you, you know, need you need to be eternally yeah. grateful to her. She's she's a one know, woman she knows dawa machine. She knows, she knows it. Yeah, she plays my lectures on the bus, on the on the train, yeah. <laughs> on the at the subway, yeah. wherever she is. She turns the volume up on her phone, and the people on the bus sitting next to her they marvel at what they're hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. She can she can tell you about it. She's told me several times yeah. that people comment and say, who is yeah. that? How, where, where, where can I get some? She does it. She'll be like uh, Amina Adcock. She's another one. She drives Uber. When people get into her Uber, she's playing these classes. And they're like, who in how? That's what I've never heard it explained like that. So there, there, there ain't no terrorism or nothing in what we're saying. We're we trying to save the world and remake the world. So we thank you and all people like you who she's invited and who other people have invited. This is where the water is. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Alaikum salam. Thank you for joining us. That's powerful. Anyone else? Come on. Double Dutch. Jump in. Assalamu alaikum. salam. Hold on. I think I heard uh, Instructor Zaid first before Bilal. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go right ahead. Alhamdulillah, I enjoyed it very, very so much. And uh, my, my my brother, uh, he had uh, passed away and returned to Allah. And this, this week we had his uh, yes. in the uh, city of Kansas City, Missouri. Yes. And um, his family, um, he has about, I know it's over 20 children of his own and grandchildren just from his own mm. uh, family. And um, so I invited some guests from Africa, and I think maybe they were on, but they were like four or five hours ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So they, they probably didn't stay the whole time. Yes. I'm just, uh, I see that uh, our wings are stretched pretty far throughout the, the world in, in Africa. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I have a daughter that just moved over there and, and she's also spreading some of the information about what you're doing. So, inshallah, uh, we'll reach the, the benefit of the um, uh, and the links uh, with what's going on. We will become more prosperous. Yes. For us and uh, and, and for, for yourself. And, Wonderful. Uh, I can I am a witness as far as uh, it's uh, knowledge that you're presenting, presenting and. And Allah blessing us with through you and how my wings are really spreading out as far as this knowledge is concerned and, and the genetics and how it's, uh, it's, it's, it's so remarkable. And we have uh, our community with this, uh, with what's going on with the uh, uh, with COVID and all these things, is they got us uh, stressed out. Yeah. As far as a community, we got a lot of people that are. Uh, in our community that's really going way out getting uh, uh, from uh, vaccinated to going crazy yeah and so this is one of the best things that's going right now where we could really uh, like you say let rest 
uh, listen and grow and and not be uh, let the noise yes. that this creation is bringing to us. And from the from from the news, the television, I had I had so many people in the family that don't understand what's happening, and it's, it's tough to try to explain to them the tricks that's being played on us. But uh, I'm did love. I, I I can see us uh, getting over that that hump. Indeed. And I can see that really the more they more more pressure is put on us, it seems like the brighter the crime gets. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You got it. You got it. Yes. So, so Alhamdulillah, uh, I, I enjoyed it, and I'll be here again Saturday, inshallah. Inshallah, I'll be looking for you. And the condolences from all of the learners to you and your family for your loss. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Yadin Hassan. Yadin Hassan, how are you? And after you, I want to make sure we hear from Bilal Yassin El Amin. How are you, sir? Go right ahead. Yes, sir. You being a son from Miami? No, go, go right ahead. You don't speak that often, so let's hear from you. At, at, at 7 o'clock, but I fell asleep and I just woke up. Yeah, well, you, you have you have that uh, you have that work schedule, <laughs> so I know, I'm surprised you make it at all. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, but we, we we thank Allah that you are here. Yes, that's right. It that I I listen um, when you put it on the, the YouTube. Yes. Yeah, I, I get it then because uh, I just knock out, you know. <laughs> I understand. And uh, I'm not sure what happened with my uh, laptop recording, but uh, it seemed to stop in the middle of nowhere and. It's looking like I can't retrieve what we recorded today yet, but I'm going to ask Allah to just put his hand on it and make it available to us because what I talked today was one of the most important deliveries, I think, that I've given in quite some time. Okay. So thank you for being with us. Um, yeah, last week you... you um you gave uh, an explanation in, uh, in the, the dua on um, Rabbi Nati Pedone Asana. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I would like to get a copy of it. Whether in print or, or the, the um, audio. Yeah, it should be up on uh, YouTube. Yeah, well, the thing is that... Um, I listened to the to the recording, but I did not hear hear that um that explanation of the dua. Okay, so then what we do is uh well it it doesn't guarantee that you'll be with us because of your work schedule, but um I'll do my best to find that and send it to you. Thank you very much, sir. All right, I don't exactly remember which one it was in. If someone else knows and they have access to that recording, then send it back to me, and I'll send it, it to it, the no. In the, yeah, in the second um, double DM Central. Got you. Last week. I'll listen for it. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. And I, I kind of faded All that right. one out early, so it might have got faded out of the recording. I'm not sure. I'll double check, though. <clears throat> All, right. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Alaikum. Alaikum salam. Senior Instructor Bilal Yassin al Are you there? Alaikum Salaam. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Uh, we are constantly inviting others, and we are coming to maybe an understanding as to why <clears throat> some people don't come, and we say, inshallah, they will come. We, uh, <clears throat> we buried our sister today, and after the funeral, I connected with two of my nephews, and we have to say praise be to Allah. Yeah. We had a beautiful conversation, and I, <clears throat> I invited them uh, to the call tonight. I don't know if they're on the line or not, but uh, what we have here 
is such a wonderful blessing from Allah. And it is from Allah. It can't be from any other source. The way you talk, the way we are learning, is not <coughs> available anywhere else on this planet. And Allah has raised us to this position. And we who don't even want to hear or listen to and come to this, we just can't understand it. But we're praying that Allah will give us the patience and the goodwill to continue to invite. <clears throat> you know, we, <clears throat> we had reached a point where we say, uh, God told Noah to lock the doors and the windows of the ark. This is in the Bible, right? And I think in the Quran it says all of those who have who are going to believe have already believed. So don't approach me on behalf of those of, of which you have no knowledge. You know, Noah was pleading for his son. So we're looking at this situation as, as, as this is the time of Noah, as it was in the beginning, so it will be in the end. And <clears throat> it won't be fire next time, but it won't be water, but fire next time. And the fire is the knowledge that's being rained down out of the clouds where all data is being stored now. And the fire is burning people up. Information that they have about us, about everybody, business or otherwise, can be released from that cloud and burn you up. That's another concept. So we, we're thankful to Allah who, uh, I'm looking at my own self, how far we've come since we began to listen to you, what, 12, 10, 12 years ago. More than that, since it was 1999, right? Yeah. And we have grown, I have grown, and it amazes me how thoughts come to me when I write sometimes I'm, 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 I'm using the keyboard but it's not my fingers that <laughs> put it in the words you understand what I'm saying That's right. sometimes, sometimes I have to look back and say did, did I say that did I write yeah, that yeah. Did I, you know, you know I can tell like you said, it's, 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 it's downloaded Yes. and it's wonderful it's wonderful you can be well we're maturing because there was a time where I would just sit and cry mm. for the beauty of it. And now, well, crying is not bad if it's happy tears. You understand? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, tears, the tears are cleansing. But there's a joy that comes that you have to share. You can't get this, you can't understand it, you can't appreciate it if you do not want to share it. Yes. You must share it. <clears throat> like you said, you must. If you breathe in air, you have to breathe it back out. The trees are giving you oxygen, you've got to give them what they require. The environment needs certain things, and you see you can give, so give. Try right. trying to come after the uh, select. It has to happen. The law has designed it that way. It's a beautiful design. And if anyone wants to change it, he's the devil. Mm. So I just want to say, Brother Benjamin, we love you very much. We appreciate you. And we're going to support you as long as we can and as much as we can. And we're going to get others to do the same thing. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. And I appreciate all of your contributions, which have been major contributions to Nunetics. Thank you. All right. Okay. Anyone else? Microphone is yours. Alaikum salam. Who is this lovely voice? Carmelo Abdul came from Dallas. Okay. And and I uh, just wanted to say that I've been on listening, and after listening on the uh, Bab, my, my first, not really my first time, but when I really 
understood what you were saying. I couldn't sleep, and I had to find <laughs> Dad in the door. Believe me. <laughs> I said, I'm not good at that, but it just That's reminded me of Emmanuel. When he used to go to the Ramadan session. Exactly. And he, he, he said, uh, he said, we'll compare notes. And I thought, how are we going to compare notes? You, you know, during that time, in my mind. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I thought a lot of my, with my studies of what he was saying, and he made him costume, God, man, may Allah have mercy on him. Rahim Al-Lahi, he made Muhammad and all of the believers. But I see when he used to tell us in our studies, you got to need this, mm-hmm. get this. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, you know, I understand it. It's all coming clear now. But uh, I just wanted to say, Thank you so much, and I will continue to uh, study with you. Well, thank you, Inshallah. and you are welcome. Oh, okay, and you yes, are sir. you are permanently invited to every and anything that we do. We thank you. I love your spirit. Yes, you. shukran. Afwan. Right. All the believers, I've been listening to you, so you are really been. Uh, let's just say studious with the the instructor so yeah continue all right inshallah all right alaikum salam thank you Mm -hmm. all right let's keep that going man that's a wonderful note anyone else give us your name where you're calling from if you don't do anything else alaikum salam this is muhammad alam ali from uh (laughs) Richmond, california uh, just to make a, a, an announcement that the, the profoundness of the language and the deepness of the language is, is a blessing. And so we are getting, uh, as far as language is concerned, we are getting the language of the, the secret code codified symbols like Santa Claus. And then we are getting the language from the Quran. And then we are getting the language from creation. It, it's, it's, it's a blessing because that's going to bring about our own evolution and development and progress. And, um, you know, I've been with you for 10 years and I'm, I feel like a, 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 I'm floating in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I understand. I understand. Thank you, Muhammad. So, th- thank you. Thank you very much. All thank right. You and, uh, it's, you know, it's a, we, we have to be patient and we have to study. Yeah. And and, uh, and 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 remove ourselves from the 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 high the negative frequencies of of the media, the television, uh, uh, all the things that go that goes on that's designed to keep to keep us keep us like animals, not yeah. like human beings. Yeah. You know, for each to law. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Alaikum salam. Anyone else? I'm giving you an opportunity. It's almost midnight where I am, and I'm about to close out. Give us your name and where you're calling from. Alaikum salam. How are you? I am well. I think the people missed your name. Say it again. This is Habib. There you go. It sounds so tremendously fantastic. Uh, to hear all of these these, these comments uh, just continue to make it so that those of us who have had the opportunity to enjoy growing and developing through what you have shared thus far, it just makes it so that our wings spread even further. And, uh, you know, you have helped us to become even more multidimensional. Uh, as a matter of fact, when the sister was talking, I thought about us trading water in the middle of the Pacific. We <laughs> hmm. it just feels fantastic. Yeah. And we know that that is, even though they try not to say it, it's one that is the deepest of the ocean, you know? So uh, it just... Uh, it fills me up. It makes me uh, just thankful that Allah has chosen us 
because even though we make the conscientious decision, Allah has already had this in design prior to us even taking a breath. So uh, I'm, I'm just um, tremendously appreciative. Instructors, uh, international instructor, you know some of the things I've been going through. And Nisa knows more of the things that I've been going through. And uh, I just, I don't want anybody to ever give up. We don't give up. Mm. You know, we never out of the gift that Allah has given us and that he is continuing to give us is just so phenomenally fantastic. It goes beyond terminology. So just keep on, just do it. Just mm-hmm. do it. Try. Try the very oppressive word. Just do it. There you go. All right. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead, instructor. Instructor Bunny, I have me in Augusta, Georgia. I just want to tell everybody that you know we're gonna have our solar storm this week, and this this um this lecture has been like a solar storm for new and it's just <laughs> awesome. And uh, <laughs> this uh, sister Fatima, are you there? Yes, I am. Look Would you at like that. To say something to the um, rest of instructor Bilal and the rest of the people. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. You made it. I pray that Allah gives you a healthy bread and memory all the time, Imam. Very, very inspiring. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And for people who don't know, who don't know, uh, Fatima is traveling and she did not have uh, access to or was not able to call in on her cell phone and she texted me to that effect. And uh, it just dropped into my brain. It said, well, try to get a three-way with somebody. And I, I texted uh, Baina, and Baina, she gave me the answer in one word. She said, yes. <laughs> so the reason Fatima is able to make it to this call tonight is because Baina three-wayed her in. So if anybody out there has that same issue, technology is wonderful. Just ask for assistance, and Allah will send it to you immediately. So thank both of you for being with us this evening. All right. Anyone else? Oh, Bayina is also very soon going to be the host of her own podcast program. So look forward to that. Yeah, she's going to be interviewing our pioneers. So she'll be the point person for you being able to tell your story from your development, especially if you were part of the Nation of Islam and coming into Imam Muhammad's community, but you don't have to be. You could be still in the Nation of Islam. I think we got about five people who are still in the Nation of Islam under Minister Farrakhan. They can tell their stories also. Or if you began in 75, like some people did, and when the Imam came in is when others came in, you can tell your story from that point. But Bayina Hamid will be the point person for us developing at least the first book on our own history from our own experience. And Imam Muhammad said to me once in a private meeting, he said, Bilal, if we don't tell our own story, it will never be told. And he told that to me in the context of me working on the screenplay for a film on the life of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he assigned me that task, and I'm still on it. We're going to have that as a... uh, if not as a major film project, because it takes too long to tell this story. You can't tell it in an hour or two hours. So it's got to be something that you can go on uh, on uh, your television and see for four and five nights in a row. It has to be that kind of miniseries. So we're still working on that. Now I'm going to say something to you guys before I conclude. And I think you'll be able to put the pieces of this puzzle together when I say this. I had a meeting with Imam Muhammad once in the year 2000 and I was living here in the South for the first time before I moved back to New York and then moved back here again about five years ago, six years ago. And uh, he came to listen to me, although while he was alive, I was not a, an Imam. 
I, I was a teacher in New York, and I taught public high school for 13 straight years, but he did not know me as such. He knew me as a performer, as a musician, a singer, a songwriter, etc. And he had heard a song that I had did for one of the conventions called We Cannot Stop Now. And he had told his brother Elijah too, Elijah II, that if Ben Bilal, I was called the Ben Mushir Bilal, as a performer, Ben Mushir Bilal, my middle name. He said, if he needs me for anything, I don't want him to call my secretaries. I want him to call you. I want him to tell you that he needs me, and I'll take it from there. So as he was coming down to North Carolina for a meeting concerning the next convention, and he announced that it would be called We Cannot Stop Now, and yada, yada, that was in Greensboro, North Carolina. I heard him say that. And I immediately got on the phone. Uh, Actually, I immediately got on my, uh, I got with my musician producer friend. And I, that night I wrote the song called We Cannot Stop Now. And I called his brother the next day or the day after. And I said, listen, I need, I heard the imam is coming to my part of North Carolina in a couple of weeks. I said, I need for him to come by and listen to this song. In fact, I didn't even tell Elijah that. I just said, I need for him to come by. And, uh, he said, okay, I'll let him know. So he told the imam, the imam called him back and said, well, did Brother Bilal say why he wanted me to come to his house? <laughs> so Elijah said, well, no, he didn't mention why. Imam Muhammad said, well, if Ben Bilal wants me to come to his house, I'm coming to his house. And he did. He showed up at my house. He stayed there for about 20 minutes, close to 30 minutes, and then he had to make a plane. So he asked me to ride with him to the airport. So while I was writing is when he actually listened to the song in the car. And he had that thing. He told the brother driving, he said, man, turn that up. It was an upbeat song. It's about seven minutes, almost eight minutes long. He said, turn that up. He listened to it intently. And then he turned to me and my musician friend who was in the car with me in the back seat. And he said, who wrote that? And I said, I did, sir. And he said, and who did the music? And I said, this one man sitting next to me, I said, he's a master of at least eight different instruments, plus he knows the technology to be able to pull up any instrument he wants, and he has the gift of being able to play that even if it's on the keyboards. He said, I said, he's able to play it as though you're hearing the actual instrument. He said, you are fantastic. Then Imam Muhammad said something interesting to me, and it's coming up in my brain now because I want to explain it a certain way. This is not to brag because I don't even usually tell people about this particular visit. He said, after he heard the song, he said, this is the best music that this community has produced in all of its history. I don't take that lightly. And I believe what he was saying was this. It's not that I'm the best singer in the world, but what he heard in the lyrics, what he heard in the words that he was listening to is what I believe was the tipping point for him saying that. And I think it just kind of came out of he didn't, you know, pre-plan those words. And, and, And that's a big statement. Now, you can say, hey, man, this is a great song. But he said, this is the best music that this community, you know how many musicians we've had. That's why I don't like to keep talking about it because some of them don't like me to say it. But he said, this is the best music that this community has produced in its whole history. Remember now, we got a history of Gamble and Huff. They're Muslim. Gamble is a Muslim. Kenny Gamble, he's a Muslim. We got Cool in the Gang. We got a lot of musicians that are professional. And Imam Muhammad knew it. But he said, this is the best. Now, I believe the other thing he was doing was encouraging me to take the spotlight in terms of the advancement of our cultural interests. And that would be because he knew me as a playwright, as an actor on stage. He saw, he invited one of my plays to Chicago. He knew it very well. Remake the World was the first uh, play. The second play was called The Evolution of a Community. The third one was called It's Wake Up Time. The fourth one that was on the road not too long ago was called or is called Brother Imam, The Life, Leadership, and Legacy of Wallace D. Muhammad. Now, you may have heard of those stage productions. I don't like to call them plays because we ain't really playing. 
you may have heard of those productions, but you might not have known it was uh, traceable to the works that I have done. So Nunetics, just to fast forward, is actually the fast forward movement of all of the collective experience of yesterday. I hope you understand the way I put that. It's no longer an individual personality, Ben Mushia Bilal. It's no longer that. The rate of speed at which I see myself growing in this language, I know it's connected to the frequencies of the people like yourselves who are joining me week after week. Some been with me two years, three years, 10 years. That's a collective bonding of frequencies. And that's the reason you're growing the way you're growing. And it's the reason why I keep getting major downloads. Every time I open the Quran, I have to put it down. It's too much. Imam Muhammad's language, I can play 10 minutes worth of a lecture or read 15 minutes worth of one, uh, worth of his book. I got to put it down. I can't keep reading it. It's too much. So I know it's intended to share with all of you. And you're going to come under this same weight and responsibility, and you're going to feel obligated to share it with other people. That's where we are right now. We're at a critical juncture because the world needs us in a way which will possibly even save lives. I mean that literally. It is life-saving information at this point. So be aware of that. Take it seriously. As I say, this is not entertainment. Don't come here for tap dancing and clowning. This is the most serious thing happening on planet Earth right now, as Imam Muhammad told you about his mission when he was here. He said there's nothing more serious than what he's doing right now, nowhere on the planet. No leadership more significant. Now, I'm saying the same thing as far as teaching and instructing is concerned. And I'm not just talking about our association under Imam Muhammad. I listen to leaders high and low, far and wide, and I'm telling you, there's nothing more significant that I've heard coming from them than what I hear coming from us right now. And that is a mercy from Allah that you didn't have to do it through a PhD or a master's program or some four schools of thought, uh, you know, uh, what, you didn't have to go through all of those doors and those hoops. And here you are with the purest preservation of Imam Muhammad's logic and language on planet Earth. And all your job is, is to invite others who have been with you for all those years at the Masjid and, uh, you know, in the schools, Clara Muhammad and other schools, and just knock on their door and invite them and say, listen, oh, can I get your email address? I want to send you this replay of what this instructor guy just told us two days ago or last weekend. I just want to see what you think of. Don't even tell them what you think about it. Just tell them, let's see what you think about it. You've been an imam, you've been a teacher, you've been a leader, you've been a, you know, a person who's of weight and value in this association. You need to hear this. That's how you have to begin to approach people. You can't just hide this under a rock anymore or it's going to do damage to you mentally and spiritually. You can't take in all of this and not give any of it out and not tell other people about it. That's a crime now. So with that said, is there anyone else? Just last chance. If you want to give us your name, where to call him from. If not, we're going to close out. Going once, going twice, <laughs> going three times. So you can hear how raw my voice is getting. So the clock on the wall says it's time to quit. <laughs> and uh, inshallah, I'm going to try to retrieve this recording. I know I have at least half of it on a different recorder, but... Uh, Allah knows what he's doing. He does everything for his reasons. So we're going to be satisfied with that, whatever it turns out to be. Maybe he just wanted you to commit more of what I said to memory. So with that said, we give that same dua, which Adin mentioned, and that is, Rabbana atina fid dunya hassanatan wa fil akhirati hassanatan wa qina adab nar And that is our guardian, evolver, and sustainer, Give us the excellence of this life and give us the excellence of the life to come and save us from the torment of the fire of our own misguided passions, as Imam Muhammad added. And Nar, it's not talking about the hellfire that you'll experience after you physically die and are punished if 
that happens, we say that we pray that Allah save us from any such uh, decision. It's talking about the fire of people's opinions and the fire of misdirected passions and egos and all of that level of destruction. So we ask Allah to save us from that by introducing us to al akhirah while we live. al akhirah simply represents the understanding that you grow into after accepting the Quran on that mundane level. As you read it, you say, this is what Allah said, so this is what I'm accepting, even if you don't understand it. You have to begin your journey into the Quran with that mindset. Allah said it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make all of the sense in the world. The way this is phrased, maybe it's the translation. I don't know, but I accept it anyway. And it's going to be Allah who's going to raise your, what they call fane, F-A-N-E. He's going to bring out of that mundane level layers of explanations and interpretations and understanding for you. No scholar, no teacher, no administrator, no instructor can do that for you. The only one who can give you those stratas of graduating understanding levels or levels of understanding, the only one who can do that is you having a direct telephone line, if you will, to Allah. You can dial him direct, ask him, and it's going to be given to you as long as it's good. So I, I, I pray you understood that, all of you. Take care of your family concerns. Those like myself who don't get a chance to spend as much time with their spouse because you can imagine for me to bring you what I bring you on a daily basis to teach six and seven straight hours. Imagine what I'm doing with the rest of the day. I'm studying and putting this information together. So I get a chance to just chit chat with my wife, with my children, but a lot of my time is spent putting information together so that you'll have a better life. So again, whatever you can give above and beyond what it is your needs call for. Don't think I'm sitting here rich and living in luxury. I'm not. <laughs> I can use anything that you can split off and, and, and put this way. But in a minute, I already know what's going to happen as far as that. There will be nothing that any of us will need as far as economics and those kinds of things are concerned. And we'll still be living on the same level. We're not going to be living like fat cats, but Allah is going to open up some serious, I'm telling you, I know it like I know we're sitting here talking to each other. He's going to open up some serious reservoirs of wealth for nunetics. And it's going to happen in your lifetime. If you live in the next uh, two to three years, just live that long. Take care of yourself that long. Stay healthy. <laughs> and you're going to see what I'm talking about. It's, it's being put together right now in the ether. And it's just a matter of time before the ether becomes our Kalthar, our river of abundance. So thank you all for listening. As I greet you with the greetings of peace that obligate each and every one of us to keep the peace. Salamu alaikum. Thank you all. Indeed. Indeed.